We started with the armor, but now it's time to arm the Mandalorian. Join me today as we print the Mandalorian rifle. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said in the intro, we're going to print the Mandalorian rifle. This is completely 3D printed except for one bolt, which is a small little M3. Uh, I think it's by six and a little nut to hold the trigger in. But this is a really cool model that we're going to print today. This took, I think, 17 separate pieces had to be printed for this model. Some of them I cheated and printed a few together. Some I did completely individual, like the rifle back into the rifle stock. I just have this glued together. I still have some uh, 3D pen fixing to do on this before I get it ready to prime and paint and make it look pretty. But pretty cool prop, right? I think total material wise, I spent not even $15 in PLA to print this. So we're going to hop over to the computer. We're going to get some of the models sliced so you guys can kind of see what I did for each piece. I did roughly about 30% infill on each piece, a little bit heavily, heavier infill into the butt of the rifle because we want it to be weighted to counteract. We want it to be balanced, but this model has some pretty cool stuff along with the cartridge loader pops up so you can act like you're loading a cartridge just like the Mandalorian. You know, it's got a lot of cool tr cool trimmings and honestly, this was not a bad model to put together. So let's hop over to the computer and let's get this thing sliced. All right, guys, as you can see, here's the rifle that we are going to be printing today by Oddworks. This is a <laughs> really awesome model. I fell in love with this one. Not only did I not have a terrible time printing this, but the assembly, he gives awesome instructions, which you don't find a lot of times on these models. So there are inserts that we have to print and different pieces. Some pieces I did combine, some pieces I did not. Um, some pieces I just did on their own. But awesome model, works great. That's the wrong file. And I have misplaced this folder. Found it. Okay. So, there are a lot of files in here that you can uh, work with. So, I've already downloaded and unpacked the file, and there's a lot in here. You got to print everything. Insert one, you got to print twice. Insert two. Insert three. You got to print these a certain, several, couple, you need to print, my recommendation, print three of each. If you've got extra, great, but it, they really do come in handy of giving strength and making this gun easy to assemble. So um, let's get Kira pulled over here and let's start loading up some of the pieces. So you guys can see I have a lot of projects open right now. I'm working on a lot of things. So for time, I'm going to pull multiple pieces in. So this piece was... I mean, pretty straightforward. I did have a fail on this one originally. It was my fault. I ran out of PLA on the spool, but I printed that one by itself. I'm going to pull in this one. Um, this one I also printed by myself. I was worried about strength um, of these two tubes, um, but I printed it by itself. Um, this one, I had no trouble printing. I printed it on its own, but as you can see too, he's made it to where these inserts slip in. That's really important as you go through this printing process. This section was really easy to print. One thing I will recommend as I scroll through my settings over here, I've been doing a lot of lithopanes. That's why I'm at 100%. I did this entire gun at a 30% infill. Um, not just for strength, but weight. Now this piece here was a bit difficult. So let's get these off here and let's talk about this guy. Uh, clear this and delete this guy off. So this is part five. And as you can see, there's a big hollow gap in there, but there's a lot that is hollowed out and you'll see the insert sections as well. So and this is the part for the movable cartridge part, but you also got to watch up here where you're going to have the trigger. So you got to watch your uh, supports on this one. I think I did 75% support. I printed on, I did these on a, I did a lot of these on a raft guys just to, cause the part that is being glued together 
was the raft, so who cared if it didn't have a pristine finish? Because um, what I do um, with these is on these seams, when they come together and after I've, I use tester glue to glue them together along with the insert, but then I take the 3D printing pin and I do away with the seams. So whether I'm just using the hot tip of the pin or I'm actually filling it in with the, with the printing pin. But keep an eye on this as you go through, and I'm actually gonna slice this. I don't know what it, support percentage, I'm at 80 right now. Um, just make sure you don't over support it too, because you gotta get this cleaned out through here as well. And that can be kind of a pain in the tuchus. All told, this took me about one spool of PLA to print. So it wasn't terrible. Um, you can see it's putting in some pretty heavy support but I cleaned it out pretty easy. You might be able to get away with knocking it back to 85. I wouldn't go any less than 85 because at 90, then you're not printing any support and this thing's just gonna collapse on you or it's gonna warp and sag while it's printing and then your cartridge, your, um, the mag clip and all that's not gonna fix it, fit in here like it should. So 85, it looks like you can get away with, what does the trigger part look like? I want to see the trigger and the triggers filled in nicely you can get it out pretty easy too um, and these spots as well so that's part five let's head back over to prepare so part five was a bit of a bear part six was pretty straightforward and simple it's part of the stock now if you want to weight your stock a little bit more might bump it up to 50 percent infill um, i did not and there's the other stock piece so that's the main portion of the rifle will pull the insert in so you need to do multiple I recommend doing at least two or three of each one then you got the mag clip that goes in this one let's clean this off so we can get a good look at it there's a lot of yellow on my plate so we got to look at all the rifle sections let's scoot this insert over he doesn't need to be right up against it and you're under my plate for some reason but the mag clip this is all part of the uh, magazine uh, loading the gun. This is an important piece, so you want to make sure you have appropriate support there. Um, here's the plate that goes in there, and then the mag fixed. This one I did kind of tinker around with to get good setting down on it. Um, uh, you got some rings. Um, that you may need while you're putting, uh, these are used when you're putting the uh, rifle barrel together. The sight, pretty straightforward. I printed it exactly as it just landed on the table there. I printed it straight up and down. Then you've got the trigger itself, which just landed right behind it. Now like these little pieces in your inserts, yeah, they're small. Um, I did all mine in one, I think I did most of mine in one print. Something, like I said, some things are combined, some things I did not. Um, but that's all the pieces. Now I guess, well, it's not all the inserts. Let's pull insert two and three in. So the inserts are different lengths and sizes. As you can see here, there's insert three. I think this is insert two. So you need at least two of each insert. So, but that will get you through the printing process. So these are all the parts. You need to slice them 80 to 85%. Um, Support is pretty going to be about just right for you. I'm using Inland Pro Plus PLA, so I'm printing at a temperature of 210 with a build plate at 50. Um, I'm not, like I said, infill. I'm doing about 30% just to give it some good heft and give it a little bit of strength too, especially if I let a kid play with this or something, we want it to hold up. So um, I'll just scroll through here a little bit real slow, let you guys have a peek at all of my settings. That way, you know exactly how I did it. For my CR10 V2, most of this will be printed on a CR10 V2. A few parts might be printed on an Ender 3. So it just kind of depends on what printer I had available at the time, which I used a lot of my printers to print this one. So, all right, well, let's hop over to the time lapse and let's just get this gun produced. If you guys haven't, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join the channel. Um, I appreciate you joining the crew and I hope you enjoy the video and enjoy the time lapses. See you on the other side.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video on this one. It was a pretty cool, pretty cool build. Life-size rifle, one simple model, a lot of prints, but it's worth it in the end because all those prints together come to make a really awesome thing. Uh, to assemble it, I use my usual tester's glue. And I'm, like I said, on these seams, I'm gonna take the 3D printing pen and I'm gonna fill those in. I may use some of the Vallejo resin to kind of touch up some spots. But if you guys wanna see me paint this, Leave me a comment down below, leave some likes on this video, and let me know that you want to see the final, final product of this being painted and completed. But this is the actual model and build done. One thing off the checklist. Now, join me later on as we print the Mandalorian blasters. See you guys next time.